Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2023 Jeep Wrangler 4xe, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Roadmaster Direct Connect Base Plate Kit with removable arms. Uh, before we get into that though, let's just take a couple minutes, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. Uh, I figured it'd be useful just to kind of refresh ourselves and go over the main parts that we're gonna to need to flat tow our Jeep down the road in the first place. There's gonna be a total of five main components that you're gonna need. Uh, first one's gonna be the base plate. And what that's gonna do is provide us with a solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. So tow bar is the second component. This is gonna be the physical link that actually connects the front of your Jeep to the back of your motorhome. Third main part will be safety cables. And these are just there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep your Wrangler uh, connected to your RV. Fourth main part will be tow bar wiring and what this is going to do is transfer the lighting signals from the back of your coach to the back of your Wrangler uh, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least the fifth main part will be a supplemental braking system and what this is going to do is apply the brakes in your Jeep whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome uh, helping to bring you to a more predictable and complete stop. This is what your Jeep can look like whenever you're not hooked up to your motorhome, which I feel like is important, you know, because you're not always going to be flat towing. And even though you can see the components, they look right at home, honestly. Um, they don't really look out of place on the front of the Jeep because uh, these things just take accessories really well. Just about whatever you throw at them uh, looks good. And they're going to be easy to get to, uh, easy to use. You know, everything's, you know, in the open for the most part. Uh, and I do like that they give you some bracketry as well. That way you can easily mount up uh, your wiring connector and, and other flat toe accessories without having to really fabricate anything or uh, spend too much time on that type of thing. When you are ready to hook up though, uh, you're gonna have these removable arms. And the way these work, really simple. You just slide them in, rotate it about a quarter turn until it locks into place. Same deal with the one on the other side. And now that's gonna give us an attachment point, that way we can hook our tow bar up to it. When you are ready to uh, hook up to the tow bar, uh, it's gonna be really simple. And I feel like that's important. You don't wanna mess around too much with trying to figure a bunch of things out. But since these are direct connect, you're just gonna slide your tow bar into position and put the pin through. And this base plate is gonna work with most Roadmaster tow bars as well as other manufacturers, and that's because a lot of times now they make adapter in. So if you happen to have, let's say, a, a Blue Ox tow bar, um, sometimes you can pick them up with Roadmaster ends. And if not, usually, like I said, there's an adapter, you can change it over to make it work. So pretty convenient. And the safety chain uh, are pretty easy to get to and just snap right in place as well. Here's what your flat tow setup can look like whenever you're, uh, you know, towing behind the motor home. And as far as the base plate goes, I like that it's relatively wide. Um, that should help the Jeep kind of track a little bit better, you know, having that, that little bit wider footprint. Um, everything's organized, you know, you can see what's going on very easily. You can take a quick look back here and uh, make sure everything's going good. Other than that, though, at the end of the day, a uh, nice base plate kit. You know, you really can't go wrong with it. It's gonna look good. Uh, be easy to use and work with a lot of different a lot of different tow bars so you know um, in terms of the installation this one isn't too bad uh, you pull the front bumper off a uh, little bit of drilling but you know it's it's kind of in the middle of the road in terms of uh, difficulty at least in my opinion but uh, if you plan on doing it yourself feel free to hang around we'll go ahead and get started on it now to begin our installation we're going to be here at the front of our jeep and we're going to need to remove our front bumper now pay attention to the instructions because depending on what type of bumper you have, you know, what type of rock guard you have and so on, things might be a little bit different in terms of disassembly, but for the most part, you know, this is gonna cover the majority of the models and kind of hold true for all of them. But just a quick tip, you know, pay attention to that. Uh, first thing we're gonna do though, over here on our passenger side, there's a wiring connector that we need to disconnect. Here's that connector. Go ahead and we're gonna push down on the center of the tab while we pull apart the other one, uh, just like that. If you move up to this little channel here, just in front of the grill, 
On each side, we're going to have a plastic pushpin style fastener like that. So you can pry up on the head of it and then work the base out. And uh, from this point on, whatever we do to one side of our vehicle, we'll also do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. We're able to remove our rock guard, and so there's going to be several pushpin style fasteners that run along the front edge, uh, like this one here. With these, flathead screwdriver, um, a trim tool like this does make it easier to get them out to in this scenario. Um, so we'll just work our way and all the way along here and get them all pulled out. Once all them top plastic push pins are out, we're going to have two 8 millimeter head screws, one on each side. Get them out, and that should be it. We should be able to kind of lower this down and set it off to the side for now. We're going to need to remove this metal guard here, and so on each side there's going to be a 16 millimeter head bolt. Get them pulled out, and then you should be able to kind of push up on that and uh, set it to the side for now. To get our bumper beam off, you're going to have a total of four nuts we need to remove on each side. So two here, two on the other side of the frame. And these are going to be an 18 millimeter. I do suggest uh, just having one on each side, kind of hand tight, a few threads on it. That way when all of them are removed, our beam don't you know, come falling off the vehicle. Makes it a little more manageable. But for the others, we'll take them completely off. Uh, we're able to lower our vehicle down. And what I'm doing is removing those nuts that we left on hand tight. And we should be able to now Grab our bumper and work it off. Moving back to our metal uh, shield here, we are going to have to trim it out. Uh, so diagram the instructions, we're going to trim this off and we're only going to keep these little pieces uh, for each side. So uh, I like to use a sawzall to get this material removed and cut that out. take our uh, cut pieces and what I did is I painted along the sides where I cut there just to give a coating of protection on it. Hopefully it won't uh, rust, you know. But we're going to take the new hardware that they give you. It's just a bolt. Get them in place and snug them down with a 17 millimeter socket. If you look at the side of your frame on each side of it, we're gonna have this frame stiffener and we need to remove them. So a 16 millimeter head bolt. Kind of just slide it back, pull it off, and then we'll get the whole bolt removed. And we'll do the same thing, get the other side off. What we're able to do now is enlarge a couple of holes. Uh, that way our base plate hardware will fit into the frame. And so on the outside of our frame, we're gonna have this one up here. And this one, this one down here, um, we'll probably just kind of round it out a little bit. It's a hexagon shape. Uh, but we'll start with these two. Take the uh, appropriate size bit. This one's almost a size. We might just open that one up a little bit too. But this one up here for sure. I'm going to drill that out. And we're eventually going to go, you can either go all the way through the frame or come back from the inside of the frame because there's holes over here too. And and run your bit that way, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I got our holes drilled out on that side of the frame. Then I just did this one and this one here on the inside of the frame. And then came back with some black paint put it on the bare metal, that way we don't have to worry about uh, any rust in the future. 
You can grab your base plate now, and these are side specific, so check your instructions. But quick way to tell, you know, the safety uh, cable tab here is going to be towards the center of the sheet. But this is just going to work into place. Sometimes they're a little tight. That's all right. And what we're gonna do temporarily for now is take the hardware that we removed from right here that was holding on those, uh, you know, those little support pieces. And we're just gonna put, put those in to hold the base plate in position. To get the rest of our hardware started, we're gonna start up top and kind of work our way down. Uh, this one up here, you're gonna take a long bolt, put on a flat washer, and then all the hardware that we're going to use to secure the base plate, you're going to want to take some red Loctite and put a, put a drop or two on the threads. So I've done that. But you're going to just get this started, and then there's a gap in between the base plate and the frame rail. You're going to take uh, one of the spacers that they give you, kind of push that down in there, run the bolt through it, and out the other side of the frame. Where it comes out the other side, the frame again you'll take one of the spacers and run it through so get the bolt coming out get our other spacer in there push that all the way through then you're going to put on a flat washer a split lock washer and a nut for this hole uh, you're going to have the same bolt and the flat washer your loctite no spacers this time but that'll run through it comes out and just like the one on top flat washer split lock washer and a hex nut for this hole over here you're going to take the handle nut and um, kind of bend it in a way to where we can put it up through this opening and line it up with that uh, with that attachment point so Get it pretty close. Sometimes these can be a little tricky, you know, so take your time with it. Lined up best you can. Then with this one, you're going to take a bolt, a split lock washer, and a flat washer. Put your Loctite on there and get it started hand tight. With all the uh, included hardware in. I took the bolts out that we put in first, the factory ones, put our Loctite on there, and we can put them back in. And then before you tighten these down, what you want to do is make sure that the face of the base plate is actually lined up with the holes in the bumper or the frame here, the bumper mount, because sometimes they get tweaked a little bit. It's pretty normal. Uh, but what I like to do is take a, a tool like this, or you can use a screwdriver or whatever you got, and just make any adjustments if you need to, you know, kind of tweak it to get everything uh, to line up as best as you can. And then uh, once you're happy with it, you can come back with a three quarter inch uh, socket and wrench and snug all the new hardware down. Once all of our hardware is snug down, uh, you can come back with a torque wrench and tighten it all to the amount specified and the instructions. What we'll do now is come back with a pair of snips and you can either clip that handle off or in our case I was bending it a little bit and it just popped right off. So either way, uh, we'll get it removed. Like I said, sometimes these holes aren't gonna line up perfectly with the face of the frame here. Um, pretty, pretty typical. So you can take a pry bar or whatever and, and try to pry it in place. Sometimes um, you might have to come in and just open it up a little bit. Not a big deal if you gotta remove a little bit of material. So just come in with a grinding bit and do that now. That way when we go to put your bumper back on, it lines up easy and we don't have to fight it. Now that we have both base plates completely installed, we'll go ahead, take our bumper and work it back into position. So I went ahead and resecured our bumper the opposite way that I removed it. You know, got all those nuts tightened down 
And uh, if you had that electrical plug, make sure you go ahead and get that plug back in as well. And now we can move on to our rock guard here. So this will have to get trimmed. And they give you some diagrams and the instructions that you can follow to give you an idea. So my recommendation would be to draw them out and then not a bad idea either to come over here and just kind of reference it and eyeball it to make sure uh, that when we do trim this out, everything uh, should fit. We got our diagram, draw it out. And uh, we want to radius the corners. And so to do that, I'm going to use a hole saw. So I'm just going to line that up as best as I can. And we're going to do that to each corner. And then we'll continue to cut this out. I'm going to use a multi-tool. Well, that's just kind of what I like. You can use a Dremel tool, a, you know, a, a jigsaw, or even a sharp pair of snips would probably do it. Whatever you got and you find uh, um, most appropriate. Pop that out. And then if you want to, you can always come back with a straight edge or a file or something and uh, clean up all the rough edges. Let's do a quick test fit here, and everything works out really well. Um, if you have to take out a little more material, then you know, so be it, and kind of uh, go from there. But I'm not going to reinstall this just yet. Um, that's because I'm going to be doing some of my other flat towing components, wiring and and uh, braking system, and so I'm going to leave this off. Uh, that way, I have a little more room to see and work under this area if I need to. And once we have that wrapped up, then we'll come back and just simply reinstall this. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster Direct Connect Baseplate Kit with removable arms on our 2023 Jeep Wrangler 4xe.